Now, in our first story, President Ekufuadu says he's determined to deal with kidnappings in the country. Uh, his comment comes following public agitation for three girls kidnapped in Takradi to be found and reunited with their families. Now, according to him, the emerging phenomenon is unacceptable and must be dealt with. President Ekufuadu was interacting with the National Anti-Corruption Coalition here in Accra on Monday. We are all concerned about this phenomenon of kidnappings, which you know, we have not known. Our brothers and sisters in Nigeria have known it, but we have not known it in this country. And uh, we need to do something about it to make sure that it doesn't become a feature of our, uh, of, of our society. Um, I am very, very, very determined on the issue. And decisions are being taken as we speak that will be a clear manifestation of the determination I have to deal with this matter. Yes, the disturbing trend of, of citizens and of uh, the reaction of uh, service uh, security personnel and also the attitude of citizens towards the serving personnel. These are all part and parcel of disturbing trends in our society that um, we have to we have to find a way. There's a thin line about democratic governance that also we all have to bear in mind, and that is uh, the freedoms and due process and all of that also can sometimes get in the way of the kind of actions that you want to take to address certain kinds of problems. But the balance between liberty and order, that balance is a balance that we have to maintain and, uh, in, and ensure its, its sustenance at all times. We want to be free, but we also want to live in, this, in an ordered society where you can go to bed at night and feel comfortable, walk on the streets of your city and feel safe. So we need to balance the two. Uh, it's not always easy, but it has to be done. And I recognize the need um, for, for that to take place. Right, away from that, about 260 million US dollars will be needed to upgrade the sewage system at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. Now that is according to the chief executive of the hospital, Dr. Daniel Asare. Now he made this revelation on Monday when the Health Facilities Regulatory Agency, HEFRA, uh, issued a license to the hospital to operate in Ghana. Uh, Beryl Ernestina Richter was at the presentation and this is her report. In January this year, HEFRA embarked on a tour of some health facilities in Accra that had not been accredited by the agency. The authority issued a March 31 ultimatum for Kolebu to begin processes to be licensed or risk closure. Speaking at the presentation on Monday, Dr. Daniela Sari noted there is a need to rehabilitate some infrastructure at the over 90-year-old facility. Some of the things which are 100 years old can never sustain itself now. Even the underground sewage which goes into the system, it's asbestos, asbestos. We're changing them alone will cost no more than less than 260 million US dollars. And I think the Ghana government is aware of that. He admits this is cost intensive and the hospital is looking at lobbying and working with the Ministry of Health, Finance and other relevant stakeholders to address the situation. We don't have a sewage treatment plant and that's a capital project. So we need to lobby, facilitate, talk to the Ministry of Health and get a sewage treatment plant in, pl in place probably join to the lavender hair one so that the compost, all the figure matter can go into a compost manure. So it's an action plan drawn and with the government, with the coastal development authority. Some of these things are already in the, in the budget and we can do that within a period of four or five years. Yeah. Meanwhile, acting registrar of the Health Facilities Regulatory Agency, HEFRA, Matthew Cherme, who presented the certificate to the chief executive of the hospital, cautioned other health facilities to register with the agency or face closure. I believe that we as a country today can share the positive news that Kolebu is now legally licensed in accordance with Act 829. And that is positive news. And what that means is that other facilities that have not done what they're supposed to do should have to take a cue from what Kolebu has done so that we can register them, inspect them, license them, 
and make sure that we can monitor them on a regular basis. The hospital, which had an overall score of about 75% at the end of the assessment by HEFRA, has been given a six-month period to present an action plan on some findings in the report. Kolebu Teaching Hospital becomes the second teaching hospital in the country to be accredited by HEFRA after the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital. Right, let's go to the Wager Court now, where the circuit court judge hearing the assault case against a driver and mate has warned uh, the matter may be dismissed if prosecutors continue to drag their feet. Francis Boabing, the driver and his mate, uh, Al Albert Ansa, are standing trial on charges including assault on a public officer after a video of their fisticuffs with a policeman went viral. Now, their lawyers want the Attorney General to also charge the policeman, uh, but Justice Bentel is concerned about delays in the trial caused by prosecutors. Here's a bit more in this report. The GPRTU, the driver union, the two belong to continues to take a keen interest in this particular matter, coming to the court daily to throw their support for the individuals. And this was certainly of some concern to Justice Bento, who said the matter has been adjourned too many times, serving notice of his intention to strike it out if another adjournment is occasioned. Uh, the lawyers had made a case for an adjournment saying that they find it necessary to petition the Attorney General because in their opinion, the policeman involved should be charged as well. I've been interacting with Cynthia Nimo and Predu, a member of the legal team. We think that the police has not completed its investigations because we have been on the ground, we've spoken to people. We are also aware of the medical reports that um, the first accused person got from the hospital after he initially made a complaint against the police officer all of that is available and we think that what the police has presented so far is not complete and so we are presenting all of that additional information to the attorney general copying the igp because this is a partnership kind of thing uh, to give us the necessary guidance on the way forward technically and practically that should really be the way forward because there is a, com uh, a complaint against one person um, who has now also made a complaint against the accused person so if you're not charging that other person and prosecuting then that the same should apply to the side as well police prosecutors oppose the request for adjournment saying that the lawyers either raise this particular matter in their defense in the court or supply the relevant evidence to the police investigators to enable them to carry out some more work and decide whether it was important that the policeman is charged as well. A Justice Bento ruled that he felt the case should continue and that it had been occasioned, needless adjournments had been occasioned, and so he asked them to proceed with the case. But the concern that came eventually was that the police prosecutors had not provided an equipment to enable the case management conference to proceed because uh, they didn't have the equipment to view the video evidence. So Justice Bentel adjourned the case to May 13 for the case management conference to take place. He, however, stated in clear terms that if a needless adjournment occasion once again you'll be forced to dismiss the case against the two individuals and so the case has been adjourned to may 13 reporting for joining us on the wager circuit court my name is joseph akable and in the ashanti region the police command has assured indian and indian nationals and other expatriates in the region of adequate security and protection the command says foreign nationals should go about their business without fear as measures are rolled out to ward off threats. Now, a 30-year-old Indian businessman was rescued almost 24 hours after unknown persons bundled him into their car and took him to an undisclosed location, demanding a ransom of 500,000 US dollars in Bitcoin. Ohiming Teria has more in this report. The abduction sent shivers down the spine of his relatives and other members of the community who besieged the police regional headquarters to seek answers. He was, however, rescued less than 24 hours after his abduction. No arrest has been made so far as police search for the kidnappers who had demanded relatives pay a ransom of $500,000 in Bitcoin. Police have been meeting the Indian community at least 400 in Kumasi to discuss security. DCOP Kwasi Mensanduku is the regional police commander. To assure our brothers, the Indian community, that 
they shouldn't panic, that they shouldn't entertain any fears, and that the police they are very strong on the ground, and that they should have our support, they should not entertain any fears, and, and that at any point in time, that they need our assistance, they should not hesitate and call on us to support them. During the meeting, they also made some suggestions and contributions. We've noted all of them, and we've assured them that we are going to implement all the decisions, all the suggestions and the contributions that we've made. DC OP Dukun says similar meetings have been scheduled for Chinese and other expatriates. From here, we are also going to meet other counterparts, other foreigners, especially the Chinese in Kumasi. We've also advised them that they should be security conscious. And when they come out, they see anything on tour, or they suspect anything, they should not hesitate and inform us so that we come to their aid. So far, we strengthen our security in the metropolis. This is an isolated case. Community members who attended the meeting express satisfaction at police efforts, especially to arrest the kidnappers. Avinash Lakani is head of the Indian community in Kumasi. Uh, the police service took time and uh, called for this meeting. Um, we appreciate it uh, greatly. Uh, the interaction was very good. Uh, we've been able to give some suggestions. Um, the kind of concerns that we had, we, we were able to share it with them. And uh, they've been able to reassure us uh, on the measures that they are taking to uh, make sure that all of us are safe and secure in the future. Uh, the crime officer gave us uh, a detailed um, brief on the investigation which is ongoing and they hope to find uh, the suspects and they also hope to make sure that justice is done. So all in all, I'm very thankful to the police service for calling this meeting and taking our concerns so seriously. From Kumasi, for Joy News, Oim Interia reports. Right, now before we go, the Mahami royal family in Dagon has applauded the Asante Henio Tumfo Osei II for his contributions towards peace and stability in the country, especially for his role in resolving the Dagon chieftaincy saga. Now, the royal family says that is the peak of Tumfo's 20-year rule as Asante Henio. The family also lauded the committee of eminent chiefs for their leadership style and efforts that have finally delivered peace to Dagon. The Mahami family at a press conference in Karga, attended by chiefs and opinion leaders of the family, applauded the leadership style of the Asante Hini led mediation committee for finally delivering peace in Dagban. Mohammed Al Hassan read the statement. We have expressed our gratitude to them for their wisdom in arriving at a roadmap to peace that is currently being implemented. Even though we are not completely out of the wounds, the wounds yet. It is gratifying to note that the process is, is far points to an objective committee that is balanced in its approach to set a complex problem. The royal family, however, have a concern. They say that the Dagban issue over the years have been treated as a conflict between the Abudu and Andani and the subject of contention has always been the rightful person between the two to occupy the Yeni Nam as Yana, which is an attempt to kill the Mahami family lineage in Dagbang. I wish to state that three families constitute the royalty in so far and so far as aspiring to the Yeni scheme as is a subject. <coughs> These are Abudu and Dani and Mahami in order of seniority. These three sons of survived to lead modern Dagon Kingdom as a traditional area 
founded by Na Yaku Nantu the first. However, it is worrying that what may have started as sibling rivalry has found expression in legal and traditional conve conventions over the years, to the extent that Mami family has literally, literally become unknown to all people and institutions assigned the responsibility to resolve the bank chieftaincy problem. Reporting for Joy News from Karaga, Hashmin Mohammed. That's where we bring a curtain down on the news, but certainly not on the show. We're bringing you all the headlines from the newspapers when we come back. Of course, we'll kick it off with an update on traffic across Accra.